Among Christian scholars, George Marston is a leading figure in studying the interaction between Christianity and American culture. His books show how such an interaction influenced American higher education and the evangelical movement. If anyone wants to consider the relationship between culture and Christ, these two books by George Marsden should not be missed. Jonathan Edwards, A Life, and C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity, A Biography. History sheds light. The study of church history helps us better understand challenges and opportunities for today's church in its mission of preaching the gospel. I'm probably best known as a historian of American religion, particularly American evangelicalism and fundamentalism. Well, I, I have a, had a sense of calling for a long time to try to understand the interactions of Christianity and culture to, uh, particularly in American culture, to, to see how the church got to be the way it is, the influences it's had on the culture and the ways in which the culture reshapes the church. Early on, I was wrestling with these sorts of issues at the interaction of uh, American religion and culture, partly because I went to a largely secular uh, undergraduate college and I had a very strong religious upbringing, and so I, I was trying to re relate the two. When I first came to Calvin College to teach in the, in the 1960s, there was a wonderful faculty there too, and I had colleagues that helped uh, set the agenda for, uh, uh, for us working together collectively, not just you know, as an individual thing, and that, that was very helpful to have people to work with, like Alvin Plantinger and Nicholas Waldersdorf and quite a few others who were, who were equally helpful. A number of other Christian philosophers were there, and I was the token historian in the group, and so I learned a lot of philosophy uh, from them at that time. Everybody has their own worldview, including scholars. Christian scholars do not need to apologize for their stance. As Marsden points out, you can respond to the times as long as you seek truth and maintain humility while studying history. Uh, I've long thought about and 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 advocated uh, trying to relate my faith to my scholarship, and it, it, and that's one of the things I learned early on that it makes sense that everyone has a perspective, and so if you have a Christian perspective, it makes sense to try to relate your Christian perspective to everything that you do, and that doesn't make you any different from someone that has a secular perspective or. Uh, a, um, a, you know, an ideological based perspective. And then in, in trying to understand the role of the church in, in American culture particularly, it, it's I think important to not be simply partisan. And, and when Butterfield talks, for instance, about the Whig interpretation of history, what he has in mind is sort of the people who are the winners celebrate all, all the progress that, that they've made. But I think it's uh, particularly for Christians who are historians or other kinds of scholars, I think it's good to also show humility about your own tradition and to understand that uh, things often go wrong. Then as far as relationship, understanding God's providence in, in all that, it, it seems to me one of the uh, people whom I respect on, on the topic, Richard Lovelace, who taught at Gordon-Conwell Seminary, uh, said that doing Christian history is, is like uh, looking at a football game where half the players are hidden. And so you know God is acting, but you don't know, all you see is other actors. And you don't know exactly what the interactions between God and these other, these other actors is. As for why he favors writing about Edwards, 
George Marsden's answer is that Edward's unique discernment and expression about God's love appealed to him. I was long interested in Jonathan Edwards. I, I grew up in a Reformed Presbyterian background and with a lot of theological emphasis. And then I, I discovered Jonathan Edwards uh, largely in, uh, when I was in graduate school, uh, more than when I was in, in seminary, and, and uh, he was very highly regarded by the more liberal Christian and even some uh, secular historians just because of his intellectual strength and, and, and prowess. And I started reading Edwards, and I, and I found a, a dynamic of his expression of Christianity as uh, an outgrowth of the, the love of God as sort of the, the reason why there is a universe at all. That, the, so the, the, that the, the reason we have a universe is the, what I call the Big Bang of the, the love of God radiating through reality and then the center of reality is do we respond to that love or beauty or, or not? And, and, and that, for me, was helpful theological dynamic that I've been reared on uh, a lot of doctrine, you know, talking about the sovereignty of God and principles, but Edwards made it come alive in certain ways. And so I was very interested in that. And then the opportunity came to write this biography in uh, honor of his 300th anniversary of his birth. And so that it just fit with my, uh, with, with, with my interests, and I found it totally fascinating to try to figure out how this person lived in 18th century colonial America, which was sort of the, the frontier and the wild west of, of that time, that the, it was a, a time when there was a lot of conflict between the British and the French, and uh, then the, the, the Indians, the Indians who were being displaced, and what all those relationships were was made, made the whole thing quite, quite fascinating. After the success of this biography on Jonathan Edwards, Marsden shifted his attention to another most important Christian author and literary scholar in the 20th century, C.S. Lewis. So after I was done with Edwards. I was looking around for someone to study who would be equally edifying that I found working with Edwards every day for quite a few years, that was very helpful to me. There's a lot of integrity. And then the opportunity uh, arose to contribute to a series Princeton Press did on called The Lives of Great Religious Books. And it occurred, and they asked me if I wanted to do something and it occurred to me, well, C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity is a book that is still very much a vital book, and it would be very interesting to write about that, and it would be well deserved to be in that series. So uh, I'd never worked on Lewis before, but it was a wonderful opportunity to read everything of Lewis and a lot about Lewis and, and uh, be edified just by someone who's a very a very wise Christian guide and, and uh, much more down to earth than, than Edwards, but a good, a good compliment to Edwards, that Edwards did the high the theology and Lewis thinks about the common sense ways this relates to everyday life. I see the purpose of particularly the Lewis work is trying to communicate to other Christians what is it in Lewis that's really valuable and what, you know, what should they notice? And, and, and so I, if it's edifying for me, then how can I relay that to an audience and communicate that to an audience? To many people who uphold scientific positivism and existentialism, Christianity has been labeled religious, backward, and superstitious. As a Christian scholar, Marsden thinks that scholarly Christian research needs to be made known. One thing is to uh, push back against the prejudice that religious views are backward or out of date and uh, 
think Alvin Flanagan and Waldersdorf and so forth, people who have shown that religious points of view are just as intellectually legitimate as, as other points of, of view. So I think there's a strong uh, argument for the legitimacy of Christian scholarship. You do need institutions or supporting networks of people to, to work with. And, and for me, it's very important to be uh, a, a, a lot of my intellectual shaping, as I said, took place at Calvin College in, in a community of scholars. And then there's also, these days, a network that you don't have to be physically in the same place to have a network of, of, of light-thinking people that you, that, that you can support, support and be supported by. So I, I think it's very important to build those, those sorts of networks and organizations and institutions that begin to, to try to, 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 to build Christian scholarship. And then, then, then I think there are also, uh, it's important for all of us these days to, to see it as an international project. Christianity is a worldwide religion, global Christianity, and there's all sorts of resources to learn from and, and, and be, you know, to see yourself not in just a little parochial group, but you're connected to uh, people all over the world. I see the, 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 uh, the strengths and the, and the weaknesses of the church in our time are, are very closely related. And uh, the Protestant church, and particularly evangelicalism, is very adaptable to all sorts of cultural settings, and that's wonderful, and it's, it's a source of growth. But uh, it also leads to a sort of market-driven dimension where whatever works is what people go to, and so uh, it, 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 ra rather than having good leadership sort of stepping back and saying, here's where we should be going, we're, we're, we're going where, where it's easiest to go very often. And, and so I see partly the role of scholars is to try to get a voice in, in saying, how can we how can we be more thoughtful in the directions that we're going? So again, I think intellectual humility is um, one of the dimensions of what we should be doing that has to be matched with some sort of intellectual confidence in being grounded in what you believe, but I, but I think the two the two are complementary for from a Christian from a Christian perspective, and I think that's one way in which Christian perspectives differ from a lot of ideologically based perspectives, which tend to be absolutist and s simply celebrate their own tradition and and denigrate everybody else. There are, uh, I think for anyone who is thoughtful, you're, you're constantly negotiating with challenges to, to, to your faith to some, some degree, but I think also you can have a confidence that uh, if you trust in God that that's, that's the best you can do and, and, uh, and, and, and hope that that's the right thing to be doing. Mm -hmm.